we're going to continue our discussion on inductance of an isolated conductor today um, and we're going to be focusing on external flux in the last video in part one we saw the inductance we derived that due to internal flux and if you haven't seen that video i'll really encourage you to see that because uh, uh, there's some concepts there that i will uh, that i went in detail with uh, during the last video that i will not be repeating here um, uh, plus it'll help you better understand what we're going to uh, discuss today so I'll, I'll encourage you if you haven't seen that please go ahead and and, and see that um, but just doing a quick recap uh, of the formulas at least uh, that we've seen so far on our discussion uh, for inductance uh, let's do quickly uh, let's just go over them once again uh, we've so far defined magnetic field h as being equal to i over 2 pi r where i is the current and r is the distance from the conductor b is the field intensity is equal to mu times h where mu is the permeability We've then defined magnetic flux as being equal to BA times cos theta, where A is the uh, surface area through which the flux is passing and theta is the angle the normal of the surface area makes with the flux lines. Uh, then we defined uh, flux linkages, lambda is equal to N times phi, where N is the number of uh, turns for the conductor. And we finally reached our uh, our formula for inductance itself, which is lambda over I and the unit is Henry. In the last video, we saw, uh, rather we derived uh, lambda internal, which was the magnetic uh, uh, flux linkage due to the flux internal to the conductor. And we noticed uh, uh, that it's not dependent on the radius of the conductor at all, the value we got was 1 by 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 into i and uh, from that we get our inductance due to internal flux as a constant 1 by 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 henry per meter so the only thing you need to do is multiply it with the length of your conductor so today what we're going to do is uh, again if you see i've drawn some diagrams out here last time we we focused on the flux that was internal to the conductor so so inside in there right uh, but today we're going to take flux lines that are external so let's imagine um, or once again we're going to take a point at a distance x from the center of our conductor let this point x be between a distance d1 and d2 and the reason we do that is because we want to get a generic equation once again, just like last time between any two arbitrary points. So what what the formulation at the end of today will give us is, is a capacity to uh, calculate our inductance at any point external to the conductor. And we'll see that in the next video where I bring the internal uh, flux and the external flux together and, and we, we, we sum it up and uh, at a distance p from from the conductor so um, just um, hang on till the next video and 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 that'll um, then you'll understand it a little bit better but for now let's just go ahead and derive what this flux would uh, what this inductance would be and here x is greater than r and i've drawn the 3d uh, version of this out here again a little exaggerated once again because our dx as you can see is pretty large once again just because i wanted you to get an idea of the surface area through which our differential flux d phi is passing so at a distance x once again we take a, a surface area of width dx and one meter uh, in length so we're going to again get our inductance in henry per meter but this time it's going to be inductance that's uh, due to flux lines that are external to the conductor all right once again, these are generic equations. They're all going to come together once we uh, once we start formulating uh, equations for single phase and three phase conductors, and 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 we move towards that step a little bit more in the next video. Uh, so just understand the derivations for now, uh, and and we'll get to the uh, use of these derivations uh, in in our uh, discussions in the videos to come. So let me get straight into the derivation. Once again, as I mentioned, if you have not seen the first part of the video, I'll encourage you to see that um, because I, I mentioned some key points there which I will not be discussing in this video and those key points uh, go into the explanation of how we get the number of turns, how the surface area is, 
um and that will help you understand uh, this derivation a little bit better because as i mentioned in the last video the derivation itself is is relatively straightforward so let's go ahead and get into the derivation straight away um step 1 we'll calculate h of x so once again at this point uh, x at this distance x we have i of x a current um and then we have h of x b of x d phi x and d lambda x and these are all the values we'll calculate so h of x at this distance is i of x over 2 pi x in this case i of x is equal to i because the current that is causing this magnetic field is all the current inside the conductor last time if you remember we were inside the conductor therefore i of x was just a fraction of i here when we are outside the conductor all of the current inside this conductor which is i is causing this magnetic field so therefore h of x is in essence nothing but i over 2 pi x and then b of x is mu times h of x which in our case would become mu naught times i over 2 pi x and this is because as I mentioned in last video mu r is 1 for non-magnetic materials which implies mu which is equal to mu r times mu naught is equal to mu so there you have your equation for b of x we then go over to the differential flux so this we know is b a cos theta which in this case would become bx times dx because a the surface area is dx times 1 which would be dx and cos theta is 1 as I explained in the last video I hope you understand why cos theta is 1 it's because the normal of this uh, surface area is making uh, an angle of zero degrees with the it's parallel basically so if the angle the theta is zero therefore cos theta is one it's parallel to our flux lines here so which implies d phi of x becomes mu naught i 2 pi i'm just going to take one of x outside and you'll see why that is in a bit when we do our integration step 4 is getting d lambda of x which is n times d phi x which is nothing but in this case mu naught i over 2 pi times 1x times dx and that is because n which is the number of turns we saw last time is given by the current linked over the total current and which is this case is equal to i because all of this current is linking the field at this at a distance x right there's no turns it's only one conductor one uh, and the whole current through it i passing through it is is causing the flux linkages and therefore i link over i is one because i link is i itself i hope that is clear now step five would be lambda exterior would be we would integrate our d lambda x because we know that x is between d1 and d2 for x larger than r and if we do that we get our lambda exterior is equal to let's do this integration mu i over 2 pi 1 x times dx this term here is a constant 1 by x the integration of that is ln so that is equal to mu i over 2 pi ln of d2 over d1 and that is because integral of 1 by x dx is ln of d1 
t2 minus ln of t1 and we know that ln of a minus ln of b can be written as ln of a by b similar to how ln of a times ln of, oh sorry ln of a plus ln of b can be written as ln a b right so if you substitute all of that you should get this formula right here step six our inductance our l external is equal to lambda external over i which means it's going to be mu over 2 pi ln of d2 over d1 let me write that separately so let's come down here actually you know what let me just let me just because i want to highlight the lambda external to you as well so let's just kind of encapsulate that this becomes mu i over 2 pi ln of d2 over d1 or this can also be written as is equal to 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 i ln of t2 over t1 and that is because mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7. So once you substitute mu naught here then um, 2 pi and 4 pi get cancelled and you have 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 and this is Weber turns per meter This is an important equation. We will use that when we combine our internal and external flux linkages. And what this gives us now, step six, L external is nothing but the flux, external flux linkages over the current. And that implies that L external is nothing but two into 10 to the power minus seven ln of t2 over d1 henry is the unit once again this is not dependent on the radius but it's dependent on the distance from the center of the conductor so that's our derivation for inductance which is external once again i know the last two videos have just been derivations We'll start seeing the practical impact of these um, in the videos that are to come. We might have a few other derivations, general derivations, before we get into single phase and three phase circuits. And um, that's where we'll start solving some problems and seeing how in real life we use these equations uh, because that's something I really want to always get across to you guys how these are not just derivations, not just numbers, uh, not just values, but uh, how we, we really use them uh, in the practical world uh, uh, as engineers. So um, I hope this was clear. Uh, once again, um, I'd encourage you to see both of these videos, part one and part two in, uh, in combination, and they'll also set you up uh, very nicely for the next video where we bring both these quantities together and sum them up to get uh, what the inductance would be uh, uh, for a conductor um, so we have a conductor let's say and what's the inductance as this point p arbitrary point what is the total inductance due to current i here um, that's passing through this conductor so we'll, we'll sum both of these up uh, in the next video so till that time uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, ask them via the comment section below. Um, you can email me um, or if you have any comments or feedback in general, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, till next time, take care and enjoy.